Let's build your first section on Web Studio together. The section is going to be these cards. We're going to build them using best practices and concepts that are universal no matter what type of section you want to create on Web Studio. By the end of this, you'll have the same looking section and feel much more confident and comfortable navigating the Web Studio editor and translating something you have in your head to the actual canvas. To create the cards, we first need to create the structure. In the structure, we're going to add our components, such as the heading and image. Then we're going to style everything so it looks like we saw it right there. And finally, we're going to do some responsive design to make sure that once the screen gets smaller, those cards stack. Let's jump in. To create our structure, we're going to use boxes. Boxes are just a generic container for everything. This is going to be our section, so the outermost part of the cards. And by default, we get a div tag. I'm going to change this to section to help screen readers and search engines know that this is where the section starts. We're going to add more boxes, and the reason for all of these might not become clear until we apply the styles, but just hang on for a moment. This box is going to be our container, so the outermost section we can apply like a background to. This one is going to keep the content contained so it's not touching the edges of our screen. We're going to keep the default div tag. Next, I want another wrapper or another box, and this is going to be for my cards. So this is going to be the parent for each card. This is getting a little confusing, so I'm going to change these and just rename them to cards, container, and section just for organizational purposes. In our cards, I'm going to add one and last final box, and we're going to call this card. I like to do the parent as plural and the child as singular. While we need to add more cards, I want to start with just the first one to get it down before we duplicate it. We've created the structure. Let's check that off. If it doesn't make sense on why we need all those, don't worry, because it will once we get to styling them. Next, let's add our components. In our card, I want to add an image, a heading, and some text. We could use a paragraph, but text is a little bit more fitting for just a little block of text and not like a full sentence structure. And let's give it some content. So for my image, I'm going to click it and go to choose source. I'm going to upload all of our images at once and select Oleg. He's the founder of Web Studio. In the heading, I'm going to type in Oleg and put founder in the text block. Now we've added all three components to this card. I'm going to do Command D or Control D if you're on Windows and duplicate it four times. And now I'm just going to take some time to swap out the information for each of these. All the content is added. All the components are added. We can check off components. Next, we need to style them. First off, I want to get everything next to each other. These images are way too big and it's scaring me. So let's go to the parent of all the cards and go to the style panel. And we're going to change the layout from block to flex. Flex gives us the ability to have a horizontal and vertical axis so we can change the layout of all of these things. We can also give a gap between them, which I want to do. Let's do 40 pixels. We notice we have different size images and there, there's a lot going on here and we're going to get it all tuned in. But right now, we at least have our cards next to each other. Let's style the first card. First, let's give it a background. Let's go down to backgrounds, click backgrounds. You could paste something in or whatever, but I'm just going to select this darker gray right now. I'm going to make the color white. I'm going to do that on the parent because all of the children will inherit this unless if we override them and you know select the, the heading later on and, and change the color right here. Next, let's add some padding. Heading up to padding, I can change one side or I can hold shift and this will let me change all sides at once and we'll settle on 25 pixels. Next, I want to give this a border radius. I'm going to do two rems and that's a little bit too big so I'm going to arrow down and do one. And lastly, let's give this a border by selecting the solid border and giving it a slightly lighter border color. And let's give it two pixels width. OK, the outer part of this card, I believe, is done. Let's do the image. I just want to give this a border radius as well, making sure we do something a little bit smaller than the outside. So that looks nice. And sure enough, I think this looks good enough. Let's go to the next card and apply the same styles. So we can go to padding and you know give it the same padding. If you recall, we did 25 pixels, but wait, a red flag should be going off in your head. We shouldn't be repeating ourselves like this. One, it's annoying to have to remember and we're gonna make mistakes. And two, we wanna be efficient when we're building. I'm gonna reset this by going up here and doing clear styles, which will clear all the styles on this instance right here. And the thing that we just covered right there is called local. All the styles we've been applying so far have been applying to this local icon, meaning it's just impacting the very thing that we've selected. However, I want the styles that we applied to Oleg's card to apply to all of the different team members. I'm going to go up to local and convert this to a token, and I'm going to call this card. Now, instead of the styles I applied being attached to local, they're attached to card, which is a reusable token. I'm going to go to me and apply card and go to Bogdan. 
amazing engineer responsible for so much. And same thing with Ivan, so much of the Web Studio platform and apply card. Now, the styles attached to card are on every one. So if I wanted to change, you know, the padding or whatever, it's going to apply to everything that has that card. And we can create as many tokens as we want and stack them on each other. So if I want a separate token for border radius, for example, I can go over here and do maybe say round large. And on my round large, I'm going to apply my one rem and remove it from my card. You can see it's red here, meaning this is overridden by round. And if I want a card to override it, I can drag that on the, the right side. So the further right you are, that will take precedent. And I'm going to clear this out by holding option click. We could have also clicked this and done reset value. And now my round large token, I can apply to all of these. And it may make sense to use round large separately because I want to use that in other places beyond card. All right, next, I want to convert this image style to a token and we'll just call this team image. And I'm going to apply these to my other images. All of our images aren't the same aspect ratio, so let's fix that. Many of the styles in the style panel are pretty self-explanatory, especially if you've worked with other website builders before. Some of the things like display flex may require a little bit of extra uh, education and research. Another thing is, and this is a bit less known, is uh, this object fit here and aspect ratio. So I can set an aspect ratio to one, meaning it's going to be square. But this just messed up uh, the, the scaling of the image. It stretched it. So instead of object fit fill, I'm going to do cover. You can see this is like the best way usually to learn this stuff is just play with it and just see what these different style options do. And there's also tool tips and uh, information here. So it says resizes the element to fit you know, within the container um, to cover the container. So I want to do cover. And now all of our images are square, even though that they were uploaded as rectangles. We're doing really good. I want to adjust the parent boxes a little bit. So our container, we need to make it a container. I could apply this as a local style, but I know I'm going to be using container throughout my website. So I'm going to call this token container and give it a max width of 1200 pixels and some padding here of 20 pixels, 20 pixels left and right. And uh, this is another little thing that is just kind of a CSS trick is if you do margin left and right auto, it'll position the element in the center. We typically want to try to use flex like we've done right here, but that controls the children. So if you need to control like a container, this is pretty often used on a container. We'll use auto on left and right. That's looking good. And now let's go up to our section and apply our section token. And the section token is typically going to contain the padding for up and down, and uh, we'll do 100. And let's give our section a background. Maybe we want to have a separate token for maybe like background uh, dark or something like that. So we can create a separate one. And here I'm going to do a background and make this dark right here. And now that I have all my colors together, I'm just going to change this ever so slightly and make this a little bit darker and also change my border to be a little bit darker as well, just to fine tune things. Now notice how our section and container are separate. If we didn't do this, I'm going to get rid of my tokens here and apply them to container and do section. That can be okay. But now when I apply my background, it's contained within the container. So that's why I like to separate out the container and section to be on separate boxes. Now let's take a look, another look at our structure. We've got the section responsible for the outermost part of it, typically backgrounds and padding, vertical padding. In there, we have our container to keep things from rubbing against the edge of the screen. And then within that, we have our container for our cards and then each individual card. You may be wondering, why didn't we just use the container and apply flex here, just like we did here? And the answer is because typically in a section like this, we would also add a heading. And we don't want this heading to be a part of the cards. So if we use our container as the flex section, the heading would get put to the left like this. So we use a separate wrapper for just the items that we want displayed in our flex horizontal axis. I'm going to remove heading right now, though. We've applied the styles on our base breakpoint, but we haven't talked about mobile yet. So let's move on to responsive. 
by default, everything we've done has affected all of the lower breakpoints right here or the smaller screen sizes. You want to start on the star and then make adjustments for each individual breakpoint. You could even add, remove, or change breakpoints right here, but I usually like the defaults because they work for most use cases. So we're good. We liked it on desktop. We already established that. Let's go down to here. Okay, now on 991, this isn't looking good. Everything's a little bit too crunched. One of the properties of flex is this right here. It's called flex wrap. Flex wrap allows the items, it gives them the permission to wrap to the next line once you know things have become a little bit too squished. And there we go. Now they're on the next line, but this is a little bit too big for my liking. So I'm gonna go to the card and give it a max width on this breakpoint of 300 pixels. Now this is looking a lot better. If we go back up to desktop, my max width is gone because styles cascade down, meaning they only affect the current breakpoint and everything below it, but nothing above it. This makes it really easy to adjust styles without feeling like you're solving a Rubik's cube. I'm happy with this, so let's go down to the next breakpoint. And naturally, the flex wrap allows them to wrap once more, so it's only one per row. And finally, our last breakpoint here. Sometimes, if I define a big padding on the container, uh, you know, we want more real estate, so maybe I'll just bump this down a little bit. And actually, I just made a mistake right there. I'm on local, and I want to be affecting container because I want this to impact every place that has container, not just this one item. Local is great if you want to override this one instance, but in this case, I don't. I want it to be everything. So I'm going to click option and the style I just overrode to reset it back to whatever it was, and then make sure I have got container selected. And now I'm going to do maybe 10 pixels left and right to give us a little bit more real estate on the screen. Now, as I go up, we can even use the canvas right here and drag to see it respond to our different screen sizes. Now, I like to usually go small to, to you know maybe around 300 and then also really big just to make sure that it all looks good and I, I didn't miss something that I can't see because my actual screen is too small to see it. Well, we've covered responsive design. Now we've created our very first section. We started by creating the structure and it's okay if you don't get the structure down right. You could always add boxes later and rearrange things. The boxes allowed us to add our different components to them, and then we were able to style them. Having that structure allows us to use flex so it can control the children. If everything was just you know, on one hierarchy and, and not nested, there would be no concept of children or parent. So this has given us the ability to style things exactly the way we wanted. When we wanted to reuse styles and not just impact the one local item we were working on, we used tokens either by converting the styles we were playing with on local to a token or creating a token right off the bat and applying styles directly to that token. Then we use those tokens and apply them to everywhere we wanted those styles to show up on. That way, if I want to change my card, for example, we can change that and it'll universally apply across the website. For instances, you only want to impact that one card. You want to have some special design for it. You can do that with the local styles. And finally, we went down to the lower breakpoints to make sure our website looked good on all of them, making little adjustments for when it didn't. And there you have it, your very first section on Web Studio using best practices and now feeling hopefully a little bit more comfortable on navigating the editor to create what you have in your head on the canvas. Thanks for watching.